We're back on InfoWars Nightly News, and I'm delighted to be joined by activist and Cambridge University graduate Silky Carlo. Of course, many of you will recognize her as the lead organizer of last month's Bilderberg Fringe Festival. Silky, welcome back to the show. Hello, Paul. Good to have you on. So we're going to try and break down this as um, succinctly as possible, which is difficult because it's a complex subject. But you conducted two studies as part of your degree at Cambridge, which relate to how people psychologically rationalize information, which basically poses a threat to the system in their minds. And the first one concerned WikiLeaks. So just walk us through that first study and what the findings were. Yeah, basically, um, I looked at psychological responses to whistleblowing um, because I had a theory that information that comes from within the system is probably quite persuasive at making people critical of the system. Um, it's information you can't really argue with if it's leaked information. Um, so what I did to test this was um, I gave participants some real WikiLeaks um, and I used two. I used one, which was uh, the Guantanamo Bay Standard Operating Procedure Manual, um, which some of you will have seen recently. Most deaf did um, was force-fed as per the standard operating uh, procedure recently. Uh, you see the, the video online. Um, and the other WikiLeak that I used was the collateral murder video. Um, showing a Baghdad, a Baghdad airstrike where um, innocent civilians were killed and uh, children were shot at. Yeah. Um, and so what we did was um, manipulate the sourcing. Some people were told that this is from WikiLeaks and some people were just told this is from a government archive. You find that this information, leaked information, does make people more critical of the system. It does actually delegitimize the system. But when it's sourced to WikiLeaks, when people know that it's been leaked, um, they experience a cognitive dissonance and they have to justify the system. And so it actually stops that content from being persuasive. So if, if it's sourced to WikiLeaks, they're basically more likely to justify it, to uh, trust the establishment, to downplay it, to rationalise it? Yes, I think basically because WikiLeaks poses a system threat. Um, it's a rebellious organisation and people beneath the level of their own awareness um, will justify the broader system, the social political system that they live in, um, to kind of restore their sense of safety and consistency in the world that they know and understand. Um, we actually find that people, on the whole, support whistleblowing. Um, and when you, give pe when you show people WikiLeaks and they know that it's from WikiLeaks, they support civil liberties more um, than you do if, they, if you're just told that this is something from the government. So we can see that they're having a positive effect explicitly when people say what they think they think, but then actually implicitly um, in their views about the kind of wider um, political world around them, they actually become quite defensive of the system that they live in. Right, so w when presented with the source being WikiLeaks, that serves to some extent to delegitimize the credibility of the content. So what can we do as alternative media, you know, as bloggers and activists to shift that public psyche and counter this cognitive dissonance? That's what I've been trying to find out with my research, and I do think that WikiLeaks um, definitely plays a role. Um, there are, there are, because the main thing is the information is important, right? So having leaked information out there about controversies from within the system does change people's mind, and obviously it's important for a variety of moral reasons as well. Um, and particularly, I have to say, when the terror threat is deemed to be low. So, and we found in a, in a subgroup of people, those who believe that the threat from terrorism is low, they're more persuaded by this information as well. So one of the things that we need to do is reduce fear. A big thing that we need to do um, for alternative media is um, you just keep going. That's the main thing. And, and the 
narratives will change. The more that we talk about um, controversies and corruption, um, then the popular narratives will change. And as that happens, our sense of shared reality will change. And that's a really important thing in this research, I think, is that um, broadcasters like the BBC have a really powerful way of making everyone believe in the same kind of reality. Um, and so if we, if we have communities where information is democratised, um, then our understanding of shared reality will be different, and then it, you won't be so disrespected for being a dissident, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I've noticed that there's this meme amongst the establishment psychology people, which specifically back in 2009, there was a big hit piece on Alex Jones, which basically said that if you believe in a cabal of powerful people who wield influence, which is the perfect description for Bilderberg, which, which we just saw a month ago, then that's somehow a mental disorder and that, you know, people considered hostile to authority and are now being tagged as sufferers of oppositional defiant disorder. So I've noticed this trend to marginalise thinking that powerful people run the world as some kind of harebrained idea that only you know, basement dwelling conspiracy theorists believe in, which is, you know, that's completely off the charts, isn't it? Yeah, of, of course it is. And I think what comes out of um, this research as well about system justification and cognitive dissonance is, you know, none of us are actually immune to it. We all engage, we all have this to some extent. For example, those of us that love privacy and we're still on Facebook, you know, we do we do negotiate our, our views in certain ways. And I think psychologists are probably subject to it as well. Um, and there's no way that you can brandish a whole political movement, which actually is very, very loosely defined as being uh, mentally ill. I mean, what we're actually seeing here um, in system justification theory, which applies to... Um, like I say, it's pervasive throughout the public. It is a, a real evident form of irrationality. You know, the, the public on a large scale are suffering from political rationality. And I think um, the data that I found elucidates that really well. The same content, but with a different source, very, very slightly different. Either it's from WikiLeaks or it's directly from government archives. Same thing, they're both true, but just th the method of access is different. And people respond very differently. And you talk about this system justifying response being, quote, beneath the level of awareness, despite the fact that your studies show people generally favour whistleblowers. So what psychological trait would you identify as being responsible for that apparent dichotomy where people are generally impressed by people like Edward Snowden, yet still go to this system justifying response as a kind of psychological defence mechanism? What's driving yeah. that? That, that's exactly what it is, really. It, it's a form of cognitive dissonance. Um, it's the inability to match two different thoughts and, and two diff, you know, different experiences. On the one hand, you want to live your life in a world that is consistent and safe and coherent and makes sense. And on the other hand, you're finding out that you're being spied on 24-7 by a global panopticon. I mean, how do you, how do you match the, the two and how do you stay comfortable in your own life. So that's really where the defence mechanism comes in and, and it does operate beneath the level of awareness. And I think the other thing as well there is still, and we're going back to psychological research from the 60s, um, but obedience to authority. Um, and that, that still stands, unfortunately. I mean, I've seen um, attitudinal changes, um, not only from my research on WikiLeaks, but also my research with InfoWars. Um, but when it comes to it, Although people's attitudes might change, their behaviours uh, might tend to stay the same, which is generally being compliant with the system. And we know, as you mentioned, obedience to authority goes back to the Milgram experiment where people are actually, they would follow orders to kill other people if told to do so by an authority figure in a majority of cases, which is what that research found back in the 60s. But in terms of Edward Snowden, news just coming out that he's probably heading to Venezuela, by the way. But we've seen, we've seen even prominent individuals within the alternative media, people like Naomi Wolf and Webster Tarpley, who have posited the, uh, the notion that the entire Edward Snowden story is somehow a, 
you know, limited hangout operation or that the whole thing is a convoluted plot between the NSA or the CIA that Snowden may be a double agent or still working for the CIA. Why do you think there's a tendency amongst a, I'd call it a hardcore minority of individuals within the truth movement or alternative media to constantly cast suspicions on the motivations of people like Edward Snowden and Julian Assange? Mm, it's a really good question and, and one we, we do well to be able to answer, really. I think on the one hand, um, particularly for grassroots activists, I think we get into a pattern of failure. I think we actually develop a real addiction to failure. Our kind of schema about our challenge and our world is that, you know, we're the underdogs and the system is bad. And so uh, at all times that that paradigm is the same and we don't really make room for any wins within that mm. um, and that's really sad because that shows how much people are disempowered that they can't actually believe it when something like this comes along another one of the issues I think is the amount of disinformation that's around online um, and probably matched by some I have to say just quite frankly with a, a lack of critical thinking because um, the information to suggest that Assange or, or Snowden are um, double agents or whatever in any way is, is pretty thin to say the least um, and perhaps another thing is a kind of by focusing on controversies and corruption so much um, perhaps this kind of cultivates a, a paranoia or um, a severe distrust of uh, that goes much broader than just governments well, with Snowden and Assange you could look at two factors a with Snowden He's given one media interview. You know, he could have been interviewed by every major media outlet in the world. He's turned them yeah. all down, which shows you that he's not doing it for his own self-aggrandizement, which is what a lot of the charge that a lot of people have leveled at Assange. And then in the case of Assange, you know, he's been holed up in that Ecuadorian embassy for over a year now. If he was a CIA double agent, surely they'd have given him safe passage and all would be fine and dandy. But as you said, it's... This, these suspicions are always cast. It's kind of a loser mentality. It's this idea that anybody who's successful in standing up for freedom or anybody who merely attracts media attention must somehow be compromised. And if you take that to its extreme, then, as you said, we're never going to achieve anything. We're always going to be in this loser mentality of anyone who's successful, we have to denigrate them, we have to tear them down. It's... it's you know, it's still a minority view, but it is a kind of cancer in the truth movement at the moment. Yeah, a, a little bit. But I mean, my goodness, you only have to look at the information that Snowden and Assange in their different efforts have provided for us at great personal risk to themselves. Um, you know, entirely sacrificed their freedoms, basically. Um, and, you know, why are people like Naomi Wolf even bothering to write articles like that when we've just found out that we are living in a global panoptical? This is a surveillance globe. I mean, it's just the most unbelievable revelation. I would expect people to be up in arms. Uh, you would just expect there to be so much more of a moral outrage about this um, as if it feels a little bit like we learned nothing from the Stasi at the moment. And um, so the fact that people's first thought is saying, hmm, Snowden, who's this guy giving us information that kind of turns the world upside down? To be honest, it's probably another defence mechanism. It's, just, it's another way of not dealing with the reality or with the information that we've been provided. Moving on to the second study you did, basically, as far as I understand it from reading the abstract, you presented a group of people with articles about airport body scanners, but again, mixed the source of the articles between BBC News and Infowars. So tell us what you discovered in that study. Yeah, um, this was back in uh, 2010 when the airport uh, naked body scanners was quite a big issue at the time. So I took an article from Infowars and an article from BBC on the topics um, and then I would swap the sourcing around a bit of photoshopping so I'd, I would make an Infowars article look like it was actually from the BBC and vice versa and, and I had a look at how people reacted differently when um, one of your articles was actually sourced as being from the BBC um, and what we found was that in general actually um, 
the content of the InfoWars article made people, again, choose um, civil liberties more. They favoured civ civil liberties more over security. Um, and people were less convinced by airport body scanners. But the effect was much greater when the InfoWars article looked as if it was from the BBC. So, for example, uh, when I asked people, would you comply um, with an airport body scan, uh, you know, the naked body scan, which is the, the real issue, really. It's not just the attitude, it's the behaviour. Would you actually go through with the scan? 20% uh, of people said that they wouldn't when they read the InfoWars article. But when I made it look as if it's from the BBC, 30% of people said that they wouldn't. And again, this feeds into this idea of shared reality. Um, people thought, when they were reading the BBC, that the wider public would agree with their view. Um, and it's kind of sanctions that response then. It kind of, you don't feel like such an outsider or such a dissident. You can actually, that, that information actually became a lot more persuasive. Yeah, and that kind of explains the, you know, even though trust in mainstream media is in decline across the Western world, they just had new ratings out of CNBC and, of course, MSNBC, who have both hit new rating lows. But still, you describe this autoimmune response against alternative media. So, I mean, explain that. We've got declining trust in mainstream, but people are still kind of averse to alternative media. What's the process behind that? Is it just the shared reality concept again? Yeah, it's partly the shared reality. I think it's partly kind of having to build up the trust in new sources. Um, but it, it will change very fast. Um, and that's why I did this specific research on system justification with new forms of media. Because I think probably now, if, if I were to replicate that study, it's only two or, or three years on, I think I'd, I'd find something very different. And I think the same goes for the WikiLeaks studies, especially since Snowden. Um, so in general, um, you know, alternative media is becoming the mainstream media in the sense of it being so widely accessed and widely viewed. Um, and that will change then the way that we, that we justify the system. You know, information is being democratised on a massive scale. And it also, the really important thing about alternative media is um, as we build trust in it, it will allow us to know when we should be distrusting the mainstream media as well, actually. Um, because it gives um, a diverse amount of viewpoints um, and criticises the mainstream media when it needs to be. And that's not to say that you should just trust all alternative media implicitly because there's just a ton of disinformation out there. I see it on a daily basis. But as you mm. said, there's this democratisation of information. There's more information available than ever before. And I think people are generally hungry for somebody offering them a definitive opinion because we see this emphasis on balance in the mainstream media you know they hop on about balance all day when in fact there are some issues that are basically cut and dried they don't require balance they require calling a spade a spade a good example would be the recent scandal involving james clapper who was both basically caught lying in front of congress when he said the nsa did not wittingly collect data on americans he was, put, he was held to task by that by people like Rand Paul, but the mainstream media gave him a pass. So in maintaining this balanced narrative, even when something is reasonably cut and dry, that mm. only discredits them further, doesn't it? And that's why I see alternative media growing and growing. Yeah, I've seen this happening increasingly o over the years, where um, the mainstream media is like um, a voice of officialdom. Um, it, it's, it repeats government lines. So at the moment, you would think, well, where is the enormous outcry about the NSA GCHQ scandal? Um, like you said, let's call a spade a spade. Let's, let's start to discuss its legality. Um, but it just doesn't seem to be something that's really possible in the mainstream media. It's just, they just parrot um, the official statements that are given and they just parrot the um, validation of this being an anti-terror measure. I mean, my, why has no one questioned why this surveillance state is in place? Is it really for anti-terrorism? Are you really going to find those needles in the haystack? You know, is everyone really talking, designing enormous terrorist plans via email without encryption, which you can get in like one hour? And even so, 
if these terrorists are using emails, then you would get a warrant for it anyway. You know, it's just absolutely absurd that the mainstream media haven't been more, like you said, calling a spade a spade and actually looking at the reality of the situation rather than just parroting what the government says. And on top of that, there's a complete ignorance that the uh, terror threat itself is completely hyped to where you're more likely to be killed by a, a, bee, a bee sting, you know, accident causing deer or a peanut allergy in America than you are by a terrorist. And that's proven by academic studies. Mainstream media don't tend to talk about it too often. But you're going to be presenting this research at an upcoming event. So tell us about that. Yes, um, I'm going to be providing a much um, fuller look at the research at the Observe Hack Make um, Festival in the Netherlands um, in August, uh, which is one of uh, basically technologically focused festival that happens every four years. Um, at the last one in 2009, Julian Assange gave the keynote um, talk, and this year it will be the um, former CIA analyst, uh, Ray McGovern. Um, and there's a, be about 3,000 people there and about 300 lectures and workshops, and one of which will be mine. Okay, and any final points, uh, websites, Twitter feeds you'd like to plug here in closing? Um, you can follow me on Twitter, um, at Silky Carlo, and um, that's about it, I suppose. Okay, it's been fascinating, succinct, but we're going to delve into this subject more in future. And we look forward to hearing from you again. Silky Carlo, thanks for joining us on InfoWars Nightly News. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. That's going to wrap it up for today's show. Remember to subscribe at prisonplanet.tv if you're watching this on YouTube. Just a ton of multimedia content there on prisonplanet.tv. Never before seen footage, of course, every Alex Jones documentary, uh, insider video, special reports, speeches, interviews. And of course, it funds the entire operation. None of this would be possible without our great subscribers at prisonplanet.tv. That's going to do it for today's show. This is InfoWars Nightly News. We'll see you next time. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. Because there's a war on for your mind. That has been our motto here at InfoWars for my 18 years of battle against the globalist. And now we see the open announcements of global, private, corporate tyranny over our governments. That's what the New World Order is. It's an unaccountable private combine of organized crime engaged in corporate takeovers of nation states. And the conscious attempt to abolish basic rights and fundamental liberties. Infowars.com is not just leading the charge against this here in the U.S. or North America. We are leading the charge worldwide. And that's because our listeners, our viewers, our supporters, fellow freedom lovers like you across the planet resonate with our message of liberty and telling it like it is. And that's why for the last two years especially, I have thrown everything I've got, my time, my energy, our backup capital, everything into really trying to awaken the sleeping giant that is humanity. And that's why the July issue that just came in a few days ago is so important. We've already sold about half the stock we have of it at cost in groups of 10 up to 100 in bulk. It covers the entire NSA spy grid, how it ties in worldwide, how it's not about stopping terrorists, but about suppressing and dominating and controlling the free press and political opposition. And in this magazine, we don't just have three free bumper stickers like I did a few months ago. We have 10 bumper stickers, four full-size ones, 
with amazing messages guaranteed to get people thinking like America has been occupied by globalist forces. Infowars.com. Listen to Alex Jones at Infowars.com. Infowars.com. Forbidden information. Listen to Alex Jones. Infowars.com. And then on top of it, six medium-sized bumper stickers with the message as well. These are key to post in legal and lawful areas on your book bag, your computer, your car, or to give friends and family. I have printed 500,000 of these bumper stickers. Only half of this month's run of magazines has them. So when you purchase them in bulk or you're a 12-month subscriber, you will get the special issue. And I can't afford to do this every month, so it's going to be quite a while until we do this again. Please take advantage of this. Buy them in bulk and give them to your friends and family and encourage them to get these bumper stickers out because with 500,000 stickers, we can reach tens of millions of people with the message of truth. They want to collectivize us. They want to bankrupt us. They want to drive us into their arms to control us. They want to dumb us down. But the sleeping giant that is for humanity is awakening. So I want to thank you all for your support. I want to encourage everybody to go to InfoWarsStore.com and to get a 12-month subscription or to give a gift subscription. Imagine 12 of these coming to your friends or family's door to wake them up. Or to give a gift subscription to the local police department or your local congressman or woman. This is how we're going to affect change, voting with our dollars and voting with our time. Again, visit InfoWarsStore.com today to subscribe, to get the magazine in bulk, or to give a gift subscription, or to give yourself a subscription to wake up friends and family. I am all in. I am committed 110% to not mince words and to not back off and to boldly confront the globalist. And our listeners and supporters, our info warriors, who aren't behind us, they're right beside us. So I want to thank all of you that have supported us in the past, and I want to encourage all of you out there who may be on the fence, that know this information is true, but have been scared to take action. You had better be scared of not taking action and letting this monstrous system come to fruition. Now is the time to commit. Now is the time to say which side of history you're on. Now is the time to stand against the globalist and the new world order. And regardless of whether you get this July issue, this July 4th resistance to tyrants issue, spread the word about liberty, resist corruption in your area. Millions of us doing little things can move mountains together. I'm Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com and the InfoWars team.